Yeah, good evening, um, everyone, once more. Uh, we're about to start um, this night's um, session. And uh, what we're going to treat today is um, stakeholders management on the project management components. I'll pull my slide so we can start. So what is um, stakeholder management? Stakeholder management is the process of forming, managing, and maintaining constructive relationship by ensuring expectations have been achieved and end result meets quality expectation of the stakeholders or end users. Stakeholder management ensures that key stakeholders are kept satisfied throughout the project life cycle. So the, the stakeholder management means that uh, we need to identify all the interested parties and uh, identify their expectation, what is expected uh, of these stakeholders to make sure that this project uh, uh, meets the project uh, specification. And when you identify them, you need to collaborate with them. You need to work with them. Uh, it's not a stakeholder management, it's not a one-off thing. You need to keep working with your stakeholders from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. And this is the uh, one of the easiest way to succeed in a project. If you don't know how to manage your stakeholders very well, you are going to struggle uh, in your project because you are going to uh, find, uh, we'll call it difficult stakeholders. They are not uh, actually difficult, but uh, we, they become difficult if you do not understand them. But if you understand them and manage them very well, there will be no need for difficult stakeholders. Well, most of the time, the project team, project managers, they don't even do their stakeholder analysis. They just start managing the project without proper uh, doing a thorough stakeholder management. So we are going to look at all the techniques, best approach you can use to, to manage your stakeholders effectively to achieve the desired results of the project. What are the importance of stakeholder management? Getting the opinion of your highly influential and powerful stakeholders will enable you to shape and define your project from the onset. Stakeholder buy-in can improve the quality of your project. What is stakeholder buy-in? Stakeholder buying is a situation where you try to understand the stakeholders and win their, win them, win their favor, try to buy them in, into the project, try to win their support. Buying is meaning winning their support. Let them support you. So once you buy them in, then you will have, um, more understanding with them, you know what they want, and their project will move smoothly. And what, what are the ways to buy in stakeholders? To buy in stakeholders, you need to carry them along. 
in everything you do within that project, try to let them know. Try to be transparent in that project. Everything you do, try to be transparent. Try to be, uh, try to build trust within the project. Try to create um, respect among the project team. Once there are there are this uh, this um, elements or factors, you find out that it's is going to be easy to buy them in. So there is trust, there is uh, transparency. You consult them uh, when you, when you need to take important decision. They make they make inputs, and when they make inputs, you know what is expected of uh, them, and it's not going to be difficult to buy them in. Stakeholders completely understand your projects and benefits of your project and can help improve support. Helps identify, stakeholders help to identify key blockers in your project so you can win them over. So these are the importance of stakeholders. Once you understand this, um, the importance, then you know that um, it's very, very important. These are the, 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 the gain. You've already known the gain you need to achieve. You need to um, obtain from understanding your stakeholders. So once you understand the stakeholders and manage them very well, you will be able to achieve this benefit. And they are, these are the major things that to help your project move smoothly and uh, meet the specification within the budget and timeline. Stakeholder management processes. These are basic processes we can um, use to, to manage our stakeholders very well. It's classified under two uh, categories, under identify and under prioritize. Under identify, to do that, to manage stakeholders, you need to develop a list of stakeholders. Identify mutuality, move where you have mutual understanding how each stakeholder is important to the project. You must identify each stakeholder, they have uniqueness. So you must identify how unique a, a stakeholder is to the project, how important they are. Each stakeholder's expectation, you must understand that. Every stakeholder have their own different expectation based on where they are coming from. Some of them might be external stakeholders, some of them might be internal stakeholders, they might, some might be um, high influential stakeholders, some low influential stakeholders. You must under, understand their expectation. Stakeholder requirements in the project. You need to understand their requirements. And to understand their requirements, you need to engage them through requirement elicitation or requirement gathering to understand their requirements. You don't assume that this is what the stakeholders want. You must have one-on-one -on -one with them to know what they want. You need to collect a data on what they want. Their requirements, the requirements of the project must come from the stakeholders. Categorize in terms of influence and power. Stakeholders must be categorized under influence and power. We have uh, influential stakeholders, we have their uh, powerful stakeholders. And to understand that very well, we use stakeholder 
um, power grid or influence grid. We are going to come um, to influence stakeholder power grid or influence, uh, influence grid very soon. What is their relationship to the company or the organization? Are they internal or are they external? You must understand their relationship. Some of them that are very internal, you find out that they have high interest in that project. But some of them that are maybe external stakeholders might have, not my, but most of them will have high power, but low interest. High power and low interest that they are not working for the organization, but they have power to stop the project because they are the regulatory body. They are the regulatory agencies. So any mistake you make or you, you, refu you, you don't adhere to the regulation, they will close, they will stop the project. For instance, if you're in um, real estate, health and safety officers, they are not part of the, they might not be part of the organization that, that is doing the real estate. But if you don't comply, they will just close the project without, uh, stop the project without feeling the pain. But a program director is a very uh, powerful stakeholder, go high power and equally have high interest because he's the program director working with the company. So you want the project to be successful. So that's why it's important to understand stakeholders and uh, categorize them based on their relationship with the company. So you understand where to place them. Then under prioritize, these are rates and rank stakeholders in terms of the following. The power, do they have enough power to halt or influence the project? So that's how you prioritize them. Those who have high power to must be um, prioritized high. Proximity. Involvement in the project. How involved are they within the project? These are some of the factors you need to look into. Those that are highly involved in this project, you need to watch, they need to work with them closely because they are involved. Check their involvement. If they are involved, they have high proximity within the project, they are highly involved with and you are not carrying them along the way you should be, then you are going to have a problem. Urgency. How urgent is your project to them? You must know what the stakeholders say about the project. Uh, about the project. When do they want this project delivered? How urgent, how important? Is this project, uh, are other projects dependent on this project? If other projects are dependent, other big major projects are dependent on this project, then you can see how urgent because most of, most of the the pro the, the pro, other project managers are waiting for you. They are dependent on your success. You need to so the project needs to be successful for them to start their own project. So these are the the urgencies. Communication. You need to understand. Your stakeholders, the level of communication you need, how often to communicate with them, the pattern of communication, the method of communication, and the communication uh, feedback. So you need to understand and know how to communicate with your, with your stakeholders. Then engagement. How do you engage with them? What do you have the necessary platform? You engage with them. Say part of communication. How often do you engage? Then interpersonal skills. What are the their stakeholders' interpersonal skills? You need to understand their skills in order to to know how to to work with them. 
What are the re other ones? Meetings. What are the relevant meetings? Do you all have meeting with them on, on weekly basis or the monthly basis or daily basis? Like in Agile, we have a daily standoff where you meet with all the project team. In some money projects, you report to their stakeholders on weekly basis with the project um, status reports, how the project is moving on. You need to report. These are some of the meetings you need to look at. Red meetings, where you look at project um, risks, assumptions, and issues. You need to look at all these meetings. And then looking at all this, it will help you to prioritize where the stakeholders come in. If you need to be having regular meeting with the stakeholders, then you need to prioritize those stakeholders. They are very important stakeholders. You need to know how to prioritize their importance based on the level of meeting. But if you have some stakeholders you meet once in every month, not that they are not important, but you know that those that you meet on daily basis or on weekly basis, you must prioritize those stakeholders higher. Follow up. How do you follow up some stakeholders? Is it through email? Is it through phone call? Some stakeholders, they don't want you calling them. You must understand the, the, the method of communication in order to follow them up. Awareness. Then are they aware of um, this project? What is their level of awareness? Where they are within the project? What is their involvement? Are they aware? How do you, what is the level of awareness you want them? This will help you to make sure that they, they, they have access to, to relevant documents. And to do that, you need to, 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 to know how to, to, to use your RACI metrics. RACI metrics will let you know who to be consulted, who, who need to be informed. And these are uh, all about awareness about the project. So you need to know those that need to be aware and involve them. And those need to be consulted, you consult them so that they can be aware of what is going on. So these are the processes based on identify and prioritize. Then you look at, um, when you are managing stakeholders, you need to look at this other checklist. The checklist here is what motivates my team. You must study your team and see how they can be motivated. Because if your team is not there, they are not motivated, then it's going to be difficult achieving the desired result. They need to be highly motivated. What information do they want or need? You must find out information every team member or every stakeholder wants so you can supply that information. What is the best method of communication? We've said that already. Who influences your project? Who have the, 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 the influence? Who influences? So you need to look at their level of influence. Some of these things we are going to look, uh, look at them using some of the tools like uh, power grid and racing metrics. What is their current opinion on your work? You must understand their current opinion. If you are communicating with them, you need to look at the feedback and log the feedback. After every week, if you are communicating with your stakeholders on weekly basis, when you submit your report, there must be a feedback. So with that, you must know their opinion. If you need to understand their opinion on weekly basis, 
After two weeks and you've not heard from your stakeholder, you should be worried. You should know what your stakeholder is thinking, at least within every two weeks interval. Are they happy with your work? You must know that through the through, through feedback. If they are not happy, why are they not happy? You must find out why they are not happy. And you address the issue why they are not happy. I don't believe in uh, some people who say that there's diff difficult, st difficult stakeholders at times with the project managers breed difficult stakeholders. Stakeholder management tools. We're going to look at these tools used in managing stakeholders. Here we have communication plan. We have RACI. That's RACI metrics. We have power grid. Then we have um, stakeholder analysis document. These are the key documents, the key tools, the key methods, techniques in managing stakeholders. Because there are so not there, this is a, we have so many so many uh, so many tools out there, but these are the major tools. You, if you master this for um, for stakeholders management tool, you don't need to worry about others. We're we'll starting uh, with uh, stakeholder analysis, um, RACI metrics. What is RACI? RACI stands for R for responsible, A for accountable, C for consulted, and I for informed. RACI helps to identify who should be approached at any given situation. Responsible refers to the role or a person who should actively participate to accomplish a particular activity. This is the role who owns the activity and actually doing the work. There can be more than a res one responsible uh, doing each activity, depending on the activity. However, they should be at least one. So these are those who are responsible for actually doing that job. They are the owner of that um, uh, tax or deliverable. They are responsible. They have to make sure that that uh, tax or deliverable is achieved. They do the work. It can be assigned, a, a deliverable or a tax can be assigned to two people at the same time or three people. But at least there must be one person handling that particular task uh, to produce the deliverable. So that's what responsible means in RACI. RACI will help you to identify who is responsible for this. So when something goes wrong, if you, if you look at your RACI metric, you know who to put responsible. Then accountable. Accountable refers to the rule who should ensure that the work is completed on time, within budget, and within the required quali uh, quality standard. There can be only one accountable for each activity, and he or she should be the final approving authority. So this uh, in, in project, if, if the project manager is, a res is responsible, for a particular, then the person accountable can become a program director. So these are the person that make sure that the job is being done. For instance, in a project where we have a business analysts, uh, developers, most of the time, the accountable person is the project manager. Project manager makes sure that that work is done and is done within the time limits and within the budget specified for that particular rule or um, for that particular tax of our activity. 
So you are the person enforcing standard, making sure that everything is done. Most of the time projects, that's what the, the project manager does. You make sure that everybody do their job. Not only doing their job to specification, not only to specification within the allocated time, and not only that within the allotted budget. Then consulted. Consulted refer to the role or person who can provide valuable information and guidance to complete the work. They have the knowledge, skill, and the experience that are needed to complete the work. Their opinion should be taken into account before decision making. These are the subject matter experts. They have expert knowledge about that particular activity or that particular task. So you need to consult them to find out the best approach, the best, the best practice or the best standard. So that's why you need to consult them. Then inform. Inform refers, refers to a person who should be notified of a decision or result when the work is completed. Their work depends on the activity and might be affected by the changes in some ways. Keeping them informed is a good way to get their attention and their support. And to do that, if you are, for instance, working with all these project management software or like uh, Basecamp or Asana or Monday.com, you find out that um, some people you need to uh, be given access to some documents so that immediately an activity has been completed, they must be notified that an activity has been completed. They might not actually be part of the project. They might not actually be a project team member, but you need to, to to, to give them as they need to uh, give them access to some of these documents or to notify them. So in some of these um, uh, softwares, once a pro, a, an activity is closed, or activity is finished, they will receive a push notification that this particular activity has been uh, completed successfully. They can get that through an email, a trigger email. Once you close an activity, an email can be triggered and notify them. That's the way you inform them. Some people like um, top directors or even CEO, they have access. They are not project managers. They are not uh, project team members. But they have access to view documents, to view the progress of the project. So in this way, you are informing them. They are informed about everything that is going on. So they cannot say they are not informed how, because they have access to all the project documents, all the project activities. This is how you inform them. They can be junior officers who is waiting for the job to, to finish so that they can start doing their normal day-to-day -day activity. Racing metrics, we are coming to um, down gradually to racing metrics to start looking how racing metrics uh, looks or how it works. The role or person are plotted along the top of the uh, metrics. So in racing metrics, the role is plotted, you can see the role or person. On top of the racing metrics, that is the rule. The people doing uh, this or doing that. Then the activity are plotted along the side of the uh, racing metrics. So that's how racing metrics um, looks like. We are coming to the 
ray sample of a, a racing metric very soon. So how do you create a racing metric? The following describe how to create a good racing metric. Number one, with your team, clearly explain the purpose for creating the racing metric. Must clear, create, uh, uh, explain to them why you guys are doing that. Identify the stakeholders who need to be involved. You must identify the stakeholders who need to be involved. List them before you start plotting them on the on the metrics. Use a flip chart or a whiteboard to construct a two-dimensional metric. Enter the activities in the left column and the role or the person in the top row of the metrics. For each activity, identify the responsible, the accountable, and consulted and the form person. You must identify who is responsible against each activity. Discuss the RACI metrics with the key stakeholders to verify the accuracy. After producing a RACI metrics, it must be validated from your uh, key stakeholders. And uh, this is a sample of a RACI metrics. This is how it looks. As you can see, from the top here, let's start from here. This is the, uh, the, the process or the project. Then you can see this R here is for, this red color here R is for, or let's say orange color is for responsible, who is responsible. Then A is for accountable. Then T is for consulted, I is for informed. Then R A is for, responsible and accountable. Some can be responsible and accountable, accountable at the same time. Some can be consulted and be formed at the same time. And this uh, support. This is not um, a part of it anyway. So let's look at the persons here. It can be role, you can use a, a, a role like a, um, project manager, business analyst, or you can use their names. As you can see here, you have Adam, who is the sponsor. You have Fadi, who is the sponsor as well. You have Peter. We have uh, Sarah. We have uh, Zakaria, we have uh, Namin, we have Harvey and uh, Yusuf. What are the <clears throat> activities? The activity number one here is uh, customer complaint reduction. Then who is accountable for this? You can see Adam is accountable. So Adam makes sure that this is um, uh, a dorm within the best standard. Then Peter here must be consulted because Peter have an expert knowledge about customer complaint reduction. Then Sarah needs to be informed because he either needs to to work, um, use the, the result of this um, activity for her, for her report, all that things related within the organization. So she, she needs to be informed when customers complaint reduction has been achieved. So she, she needs to be informed. Zakaria equally needs to be consulted because Zakaria have got an expert knowledge about this, because she's a black belter, um, a six sigma. So she's got an expert knowledge about this. 
And Harvey is actually the person doing this job. He's responsible. He's the owner of this activity. And then change over time reduction. This is it. You can see it. That's how to um, create response, uh, create activities, and then assign whoever is responsible, whoever is accountable to each of these uh, responsibilities, to each of these activities. So that's how to create resymmetry. So if at the end of uh, the week, which uh, we should be able to um, deliver one of these uh, activities or deliverable, for instance, if it takes one week to create customer complaint reduction at the end of the week and uh, nothing happened and uh, the management is not happy then who is to who is going to who are they going to be held responsible actually adam should be held responsible because adam should make sure that this is uh, done so adam should prompt harvey to make sure that this is done so it's the duty of Adam to make sure that uh, Adams carry out this response, um, this activity very well. He must be prompted. So uh, Harvey here is responsible, but Adam is the person making sure that this is done. So if Harvey is not doing it, Adam, Adam should be able to find a way to penalize Harvey in order to do that. So that is how racy. So if something happened, you know whom to hold head responsible. You know you don't need to start blaming the whole team because you know who, who is supposed to be held accountable or responsible. <clears throat> that is racy metrics. Before we proceed, I need to um, to know if you guys got any question based on uh, what we've done so far before we then um, move on to the next things. Any question? Okay, I'll continue. Then the next thing we are looking at is um, power, power metric or power grid. This is how a power grid uh, looks like. A power grid is uh, a grid uh, where you um, used to manage uh, stakeholders based on their their power and their interests. So you plot stakeholders based on the level of power they have and the level of uh, interest they have. As you can see, here is the power. And uh, here is the interest. So this is high power. Those stakeholders that fall within this high are high power stakeholders. And those stakeholders that fall below, uh, fall below the, um, the interest, uh, the power metrics are the low powered stakeholders. And those are the right hand side are the high interest stakeholders. And those are the left hand side are the low interest stakeholders. So for those who are on the high power, low interest, as you can see those here are the left hand side, they are low interest, and those of them that are the high high power are high power low interest. These are those stakeholders that you need to understand very well, because they have the power to mess up your day, and they don't have interest in the project, so they can mess up your day without feeling any pain. So these are the people you need to understand. 
You need to understand what they want in order to satisfy what they want. You need to understand them. If these are the most of the time, these are the regulatory authorities. How do you understand them? You need to understand the regulatory um, guidelines governing the kind of project you are implementing to make sure that you your, your, your projects meet within the, the, the uh, stipulated guidelines, the rules, regulation, need to follow, understand the regulations. You don't just need necessarily to understand the, pers the person as a person. You need to understand how the person can use his power. The only way he can use uh, his power against your project is understanding the regulation within their ambit. Once you can understand that, I've used the uh, health and safety executives. You need to understand the, if you are in construction industry, you need to understand the health and safety laws. For instance, if the project is um, based on data, then you need to understand the GDPR how to manage client's data without uh, committing any uh, breach. So these are how you understand these people. Once you understand them, you, you keep them happy, give them what they want, then you are not going to have any problem with them. Then you see those are this green color, this green, green men. They are the people that have high interest in this project and they have high power as well. So where do they, these are the, our stakeholders like uh, uh, program directors, uh, project sponsors. They are the people sponsoring this project. They are the high top, high level um, organizational personnel. So they have high interest in this project because they want this project to be a success. So these people, you need to engage, engage them. You need to be transparent. You need to carry them as long, as long as, as much as you can because they have interest. They need to know what is going on. So you need to satisfy them. Then you see these stakeholders, these are black men stakeholders. These are, um, they have low power and they have low interest. Most of the time they are the technicians. They are not interested in the success of this project. All they are interested in is in their daily pay. How much can they get? If you come in construction industry, some of these people are technicians, like uh, plumbers, bricklayers, carpenters. So you need to monitor them to make sure that they are doing their job. Because once you leave them, they can just be playing around. And not if they are playing around, you might not meet the timeline of this project. If the project is get delayed, they don't care. All they want is that they are coming to, to work every day and let them get paid. So these are the people you need to monitor very well to make sure they are doing their job. Then, you know, uh, people are this, um, the blue men shirts, or the, this, this men in blue, they are the people you need to consider. Most of the time you need to consider them. They are, some of them are end users. They need to know what is going on, when are the project finishing, so that they can start, um, uh, using most of them are going to be the end users of this project, so they need to be you need to consider them as well. They have low power. They have um, low interest. They know they have low power, but they have high interest. Why do they have high interest? I will use a a, a, a software like CRM software. There are some stakeholders like the sales team within the organization. If you are deploying CRM, 
they are the people that are going to be using this uh, software at the end of the so they have high interest because their quality of work is going to be improved by the outcome of this um, project so they have high interest they want to know what is going on because this thing is going to affect their day-to-day -day, uh, operation within the organization so you need to consider them and let them know what is going on again some people here can be vendors vendors who are trying to sell softwares like microsoft uh, vendor or salesforce vendor so if you are in this project some of them might be interested high interest because they want to sell their software they want you to buy that software from them so they will be um very close to the project trying to to get your attention because they want to sell their product so equally you need to consider they need to let them know what's going on then uh we're coming to other stakeholder uh tools here is a stakeholder analysis um document this stakeholder analysis document is um divided into three here you have a um, role and uh, involvement worksheet. Then you have an involvement planning worksheet. And then we have a um, communication action worksheet. These are major documents that will help you to do your stakeholder analysis and build the proper documentation. On that role and involvement worksheet, first you have to list the stakeholders. You list them by their names. If it's John, you list John. If it's Charles, you list Charles. Then their position. What are their position? Their position here means their position in the organization. They might be um, a finance manager or marketing manager in the organization. So uh, then what is their role in the project? In the project, their role might be project sponsor. It might be a, a manager, a marketing manager, and then implementing a marketing um, strategy a project. So here it might be the, the, the sponsor, or it can be a, a program director. So under here, you need to list the kind of power they possess. Is it high power or low power? Here, you need to um specify here then here you need to specify their level of awareness are they aware of this project or this deliverable what is going on at this point what, what is their level of awareness are they aware if they are aware you say yes or somehow or no then you need to specify their interests During the, um, when you are plotting your power uh, metrics, you must have find out their level of interest. If they're interested, if the interest is high, if they're interested, you say yes. If you don't understand their level of interest, then you can say how somehow. Or if they are not interested, it's been indicated they are not interested, then you say no. Then here is supportive. Are they supportive? If you call a meeting, do they attend the meeting? 
if they are supportive, attending your meetings or give you your attention, then you say yes. But if they are not, if you call meeting, you don't see them, then you say no. But if you don't, they are just neutral, you say neutral. So that's how to use uh, roles and involvement worksheet to analyze stakeholders. And with this, if you analyze them this way, you should be able to, to know when there is danger. If they are not supportive, you should be able to know they are not supportive and then work to get their support. Then you have involvement planning worksheet. Now you have done your involvement, a role and involvement worksheet. Now is now time to do involvement uh, planning worksheet. Here you see their current, where they are, their, their current uh, states. Maybe here they are not aware. Maybe here they are aware. Maybe here they are not supportive. Or they are, they are not interested, and they, they are here they are supportive. Here they might not be supportive, but your desire is for them to be supportive. So you are working towards getting their support. That is how to use this particular document to work on where you want your stakeholders to be. Then this document communication action worksheet. With communication action worksheet, we are going to find the method of communication. How do you communicate with your stakeholders? Is it through telephone call? Is it through <coughs> email? Is it through one on one? How do you? How do they prefer to be communication to be communicated? Or what is the organizational communication strategy? You must find out if, if the organization have a pattern of communication is the best way to follow. But if organization don't have any particular way to communicate, then you must find out from the stakeholder how the stakeholder want to be communicated with. And then who? Who is communicating with who? You must find who is communicating, who is uh, to be communicated. And then you must find how often do you communicate with the stakeholder? How often? Is it on daily basis? Is it on weekly basis? Is it on monthly basis? You must find out. So here if you must have uh, indicate, uh, find out their method of, is it by email or is it by phone? Is it their method of communication? Then you write there. Their phone number here is it by phone? You write their phone number. Or is it by email? You write their email. But even if uh, it's not by, it's good to have their phone number and their email. And after communication, what is the feedback? When you submit your weekly report, what did the stakeholder give back as a feedback based on your report? Is the report validated? Is the report the, um, rejected or what is, what is the imp? You must log the feedback here. So that's how you um, do a thorough stakeholder analysis. So here we are going to look at um, example of stakeholders for an organization. So in an organization, who are the stakeholders? Well, now we're looking at who makes up the stakeholder in an organization. In an organization, we have employee, they are stakeholders. We have senior executive, they are stakeholders. We have um, shareholders, they are stakeholders. We have customers, they are stakeholders because stakeholders are those people that have vested interest in that organization. We have uh, suppliers and contractors. These are vendors, they are stakeholders. We have end users, end users who are using the end products of 
that organization. We have families of employees. My wife is a stakeholder in, the, in my organization because if anything uh, affects me, it affects my family as well. Investors, they are stakeholders. Lenders, they are stakeholders. Partners, they are stakeholders. Union and regulators, they are stakeholders. Community group, the media and the government, they are all stakeholders. So that when we are talking about stakeholders, stakeholders, you have a picture of who are stakeholders to the organization. And from who is a stakeholder to the organization, are uh, these people that uh, we affect from there, you know who, which of the stakeholders are working or are affecting your project. So these are example of a stakeholders for a project. We are seeing the stakeholders within, the, the, within an organization. Now it's time to look at stakeholders within a project. Within a project, we have project leader, which is the um, project manager, uh, project team members, process owner, people who work on the processes, customers of the uh, process outputs, suppliers of the process, operations manager, finance manager, Procurement manager, HR so training manager, performance manager, senior executives. These are stakeholders. Managers who um, whose resources, schedule, budget, or results will be affected by the project. These are all stakeholders in a project. Then how do we conduct a stakeholder analysis? We have seen all the documents to conduct effective stakeholder. We've seen everything. But how do we start doing this uh, job? How do we do our stakeholder analysis? How do we start? Then to start, the first step is to identify the stakeholders and group group them into logical categories. This is organization. You can see here, this is a kind of affinity diagram. This organization, this is uh, the projects, uh, this uh, senior management, this process owner, uh, people who works on the process, other internal stakeholders, finance, um, managers within the project we have project leader we have a project team members and then here we have uh, customers then we need to identify all these people first and they put them group by group just you can see they are being grouped here that's how then you identify your stakeholder you know who are the stakeholders then Next step is to classify the stakeholder into four groups according to the power they hold and whether they are interested in the project or not. Like this, what we've just handled, this is high interest group, high interest, um, I mean, high power, low interest, this group. Understand this group, you see they are the people in red color, they are dangerous people. So understand them, understand them and satisfy their need. They are the context setter. So understand them and make sure you satisfy their need. What are the regulatory standards, this regulatory uh, framework you need to abide by, you need to understand them. Okay. These green people, they are high power, high interest. Engage these people and manage them actively. They are the key players in this project. 
Then these people, the crowd, monitor these people and inform them occasionally. Just like I said, they are the crowd, they are the, they don't have interest. They can be um, bricklayers, technicians, laborers. They don't care about the project. They might, they might, so many of them might not really know the, the business objective of this project, but they know what at this point they are doing this in order to get paid. So these people, they are the crowd. You need to monitor them. So the defenders consider and keep them informed. They are high interest, but they don't have power. So th this kind of people, they are the end users of this pro um, uh, uh, product, or the people that might be the, the end user, uh, the end product of this project might be affected on their day-to-day -day activity within the organization. So that's how you uh, plot them according to um, their power and their interests. Next, when you plot them, the next thing is to understand st stakeholders based on their um, characteristics. These key players, you should understand them very well. Key players should be closely involved in all project activities and nothing should come to them as a surprise. Example of um, stakeholders can be operations managers and the subject matter experts. Content setter are the senior stakeholders who can take critical decisions and reach to more powerful stakeholders. They should be kept informed and satisfied to maintain their support. Defenders have little power, but are highly interested in the project outcome. They should be kept informed to maintain their interest. Example of these stakeholders can be the people who will apply the improved process. Crowd have little power and little interest in the project. So don't require a great deal of consideration. Communicate occasionally with them about important issues and uh, uh, results. For instance, in Facebook, some of us are the crowd. You see Facebook most of the time, they're having updates, they're adding one features, they will just, you see their CEO Mark will just come, we're adding this, we're adding this, we are improving this. Even when they are starting Metaverse, he came to the Facebook to announce to the, to the users, we are announcing, we are starting Metaverse um, that will help us to achieve so, so, so this. So this is just to, to carry or make us um, understand what they are doing. But they are not... Um, um, losing a sleep over our comments, but that those are our comments, they are important to them as well. Next, plug the stakeholders on an empty power interest matrix, taking into consideration the four characteristics of stakeholders power, awareness, interest, and support. You can see we've done this before. See here you, you list the stakeholders, you list their position. Um, that is, um, you can see Adam, finance manager, uh, uh, organization position, finance manager, projects rule, financial advisor, power high. 
awareness, level of awareness, somehow interested, no. Supportive, resistant. This is a very, a very, um, a very difficult stakeholder. Why, are, why is um, Adam resistant? Because Adam wants the project manager to make sure that he complies within the project budget. To make sure that that's why he's a uh, finance financial advisor. He always advises the, the, the project manager about the financial implication, about his budget, about his budget cost approach, making sure that um, they abide by uh, the company standard and the best practice in financial management, in project money. So they are resistant. If you are not getting it, they are not supporting you. You must get it. So that's why this kind of people, they are very resistant. And what will you work towards? You work towards getting them support. Like now they are resistant. You, you should be working towards making them supportive. And the only way to make them supportive is making sure that you apply the best approach. Sami here, operation manager. What is the role, process owner? What is the power, media? Away, somehow. Interested, yes. Supportive, no. This is a very resistant person. So let's see Sarah here. Sarah is a training manager in the organization. And in this project, he's training facilitator. And uh, her power is medium. Aware, yes. Interested, yes. Supportive, yes, supportive. So this is how you applaud them. <clears throat> then the next step after plotting the uh, empty power interest metrics, the next thing is uh, to plot the stakeholders on an empty power interest metrics. Again, taking into consideration the four uh, characteristics of stakeholders, which are power, away, awareness, interest and uh, support. Here you plot it on um, a power matrix. So it just from this from this uh, chart, just um, plot them here. Like you can see the Adam here is now on the a high, high power and low interest. And uh, for instance, Zekaria here is under high power and uh, high interest. interest. So we've done this uh, already. So the next thing after plotting this is then plot them under uh, awareness. You can see here, their level of awareness, aware, somehow, and unaware. You must play them based on their level of um, awareness. Then, here is, um, you plot them based on their level of uh, supportiveness. This is how you know the stakeholders that are not supporting you. And this is where is one of the major area a, a, a project manager should focus. Because this is, you can see, this is where the indicators. You see, when you have red indicator like this, then you know who is not support. Like if a, a stakeholder appear under this red indicator, then you know that there is danger. For instance, you can see Adam here is appearing under red lights. You should make Adam to, to come back to green lights because the ideal situation here is that every stakeholder should be on green lights. 
they should all be supporting you. So there is no need for any stakeholder here being on red light. On red light is danger. So when you see a stakeholder flashing on red light, it's, um, it should attract your attention that there is problem, more especially if a stakeholder is appearing on red light at this high power and high interest level. So you can see Adam is appearing on um, red line, meaning that Adam is resistant. You should try anything you can to make Adam to be supportive, being on green color. You should try everything you can to make sure that Sami is, um, is gone back to green color by supporting you. So that is how you use this uh, to analyze and uh, find solution to difficult stakeholders. Then after this, the next thing you have to do is uh, you prepare your involvement uh, planning worksheet. Now that you have an idea about the level of involvement of each uh, stakeholder, gap between the current and the desired involvement level uh, should be identified. By now, we should have identified the gap. Like now, you can see all these people in red color are the gap. Doing your gap analysis, you can identify gap here. The gap is that they want them to be in green color and they are in red color. So if there is a gap here, you must make sure that you fill in this gap. You need to correct all this red color, get them back to um, a green color. Everybody here should be in green color. That's what should give you a, your project. Um, when your project is on green, it means that your project is moving well. So doing, doing um, your involvement plant sheet, you must have looked at their current states where you can see Adam and, and um, Sami, they are not supportive. So what you should be working here is to make sure that you bring them to the supportive level where they are, you should be supporting you. But you can see here, support, they are, they, are, they are not supportive. So the desired level is make them to be supportive. Then when you have done this, the next thing you need to do is uh, do your communication plan. The last step is to create a communication plan to send the right message to the right uh, stakeholders at the right time. The plan should provide information such as the person who is going to uh, communicate with each stakeholder. The key message that needed to be communicated. The communication method to be used. Example, informal chat, invite to team meeting, email, phone call, or ETC. Using communication uh, action worksheet. So to do this, you need this uh, communication action worksheet where you state the stakeholder, contact information, method of communication, who need to be communicated and how often to be communicated. And then communication feedback after every communication. And that is how to do a thorough stakeholder management. One, well, you can do all these things very well. You won't have any problem with stakeholders. Anybody telling you that a stakeholder is difficult, after then doing this analysis, and the stakeholder is still difficult, then uh, the stakeholder should uh, uh, be reviewed again. Because with this approach, you should be able to get the interest of any stakeholder to support you and to make sure that your project is moving uh, smoothly. And uh, that is the end of our stakeholder management. So if you have a um, question, I can take your questions now.
So I'm waiting for question. If any of you have got any question. Okay, that's wonderful. It means uh, I've, I've communicated very well. Yeah, Kaby Rats, you are raising your hand. Hey. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Please, when we we're talking about stakeholder analysis, you talked about process owner and people who work on the process. Can you please explain more on that, sir? Process owner is um, a process, the, a way of doing a, a particular thing. What is the, uh, for instance, when I'm talking about process owner, if um, there is um, a, a customer shops comes to shop in a in a, um, in a shop is a process. How do a customer shop? If a customer come to your organization um, to your shop to supermarket to shop, right from the when the customer comes into the shop. Picks baskets, pick item in the in the baskets, go through the shop, and then go to the till assistant to make payment and leave the shop. This is a process. It took a, a customer shops in the in 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 a, in a particular uh, supermarket. So, who is the process? Who who owns that process? Who makes sure that customers do effective shopping? The person that is uh, 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 um, an executive in the organization and make sure that customers don't have problem while doing their shopping successfully is the shopping process owner. I wanted to use a common example where we can understand it. Okay. For instance, if a customer, uh, uh, um, an executive, is using um, a CRM software to do a work in the organization, how he uses that uh, particular software to do, his, uh, to do his job is a process. Completing a tax is a process. So every organization, they have somebody who handles that process. So that process is the owner. Okay, let's let's come to um, a school. It's a primary school. When the, the students come to school, they go to the assembly. From the assembly, they go to the classroom, they learn, and then they go home. The person that owes that... Um, process of managing students from the classroom, from the assembly ground to the classroom, and make sure that they are happy, learn, and go home is a process owner. And that process owner is a teacher. Is that clear? Yes, sir, it's clear, sir. So in your school, you are the process, you are a process owner. <laughs> All right, sir. Yeah, any more questions? More questions? Okay. Well, if um, we don't have, okay. Love it. You, you, you can have the floor. Hello, love it. Love it. Can you hear me? Good evening, sir. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, all. Mm. I want to like know when do stakeholders have the most influence on a project? When? Yeah. Is it at the initial stage, execution, monitoring, or? 
there, there is no there is no stage they have um, um, crucial. Um, you need to carry stakeholders along from beginning to the end. You know, right from when we are trying to identify the scope of the project, they must be involved. And their influence remain the same. It doesn't change, it doesn't go up, and it doesn't go down based on their influence. When you do the analysis, a, a stakeholder that is high influence can never at any point in the project then become a low interest stakeholder. You know, so their interests remain the same. Their, their, their influence, their interest, their power remains constant. So this is, um, and you need to involve them from the beginning. When you are starting to create a project charter, where you will identify the scope of, they get involved because they know what, you don't know what they want. You don't know what they are trying to achieve. So you get them in into the project from day one. And stakeholders, they don't want to, to, to lose focus. They want to know what is happening till the project comes to an end. Because the project can go the wrong direction at any point, any point in time. That's why you need to carry them along if you don't want to have problem with them. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. More questions? OK, at uh, this point, um, we don't have any more questions. We'll call it um, a night, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Good night, everybody. And uh, the, the recorded video will be uploaded as soon as possible. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir.